Okay, so I'm Rem, and I am going to mod this uh, Game Boy. Um, we've got some LED mods that are going into this, and uh, these are the um, Natalie the Nerd LED mods, um, which were ten pound on uh, Zed Labs, and they install into Game Boy Advance. So I'm going to pop this open. Um, Hopefully I'm not going to shake the camera too much while I'm doing that. And um, solder this on and just kind of, I don't know, walk through or share the process. Um, I've done a few of these videos, but I don't do many of them. Um, this is going off to... Uh, somebody's bought this already, so let's get this open. I guess my hands are in the way for this. not great, is it? So, I'm going to put our screws. We can pop that to the side. Um, I've got, actually, I've got two colours here. So one of them is um, red and one is pink. Not quite sure which ones to use through here. I think I think I probably would have chosen white if I was going to choose, but I just happen to have some of these LEDs and I offer to install them into um, into their Game Boy as like an extra. Um, <laughs> Not factoring the price at all uh, because I'm an idiot. Um, I think. I don't know what I think. I think we're going to put the red in because hopefully that will show through the orange light and complement it. Such a bad angle, isn't it? So hopefully I fast forwarded through all this boring stuff um, because it's not very interesting at this point. All right, I've got one more screw inside of here and that is it for the tri-wing or whatever the hell it's called and the rest are all kind of Phillips sized. Oh, no, apparently that's tri-wing. That is not that screw, that should be black. And that is a screw that actually belongs in a, an SP, a Game Boy SP screen, in fact. Uh, you can see that. Uh, that belongs in an SP screen, not in that. But I'll probably put it back in again because it fits. Right, so if we're missing a screw. Put this open. Okay. And um, so it's already modern here. The um, there's a uh, ITA screen, and it also looks like I've got different screws in here. Oh, that's because I had a different. I remember. Yeah, it's because it's a Retro 6 um, shell, and the shell itself was exceptionally brittle, um, and it did not like the screws. Um, and in fact, I'd managed to shear off a screw when it went in, so I've had to just be quite careful with that. Um, Let's take this whole thing apart. <clears throat> um, this should pop out. All we need to do is be able to solder it onto the front side. Okay. So I'm guessing that these wires are going to be a little bit of a problem. But so what are we going to do? Red. There you go. Red is going in. I wonder how the QA was done. I'm guessing because power was put into it. So these are supposed to be separated. Yep, they kind of tear. I would love to um, try and design a PCB that goes on this kind of flex. Um, in fact, if I were to do a flex PCB, I would do a um, 
a tactile button mod for the Game Boy, the Game Boy, the uh, Nintendo DS Lite, because the buttons are very mushy. And peeling off this tiny little tab here. Without tearing anything? Oh my god. Is it almost like I'm going to tear something? There we go. So that is the pad that goes in there. And okay, I'm gonna to have to desolder the wires for that. And then this one, peel it off. I need my tweezers. That is going to go down there, I guess, underneath this, like that. Okay, I'm going to have to cut the, uh, flatten these out, the, uh, make sure you can see that tool, the speaker. Um, let's see if I can get a bit better in view. So when the um, this pad goes down over the AV button, um, I've seen the, the uh, there's a blog post that goes with this, and the, the VCC, I think, um, straddles all the way across. Um, I need to double check, but I can see that these speaker wires need to be flush. So let's do that now. So we've got our flush cutters with bits of plastic still attached. Let's cut those as flush as we possibly can. There you go. That is not flush. And then mess that up. There you go. So, okay, so that part is off, and I'm gonna need to just desolder these pieces straight away. So I might as well do that right now. Let's get our other pad off for the second. Can't use too much flux, can we? So um, I always use flux now. I didn't use flux before and I used to wonder why it took me so long to get anything to solder and it turns out that flux is absolutely the answer. Right, so now the flux is down, we're just going to pop those wires off and then once the, once those go, I'll clean that as well afterwards. So I have to reattach that lot once the, uh, the LED is in. What is going on there? Quite a lot of crap around there. All right, so, uh, which way am I zooming? Not that way, this way. We need to get our IPA. So this is the IPA that I use, 95% uh, isopropyl alcohol, which I can never pronounce. And that's just, Get that flux off, so we've got a nice clean base to kind of work from. Oh, as clean as it'll get. Uh, there you go. Don't know how much we're wobbling. So I'm rubbing quite, uh, quite hard, I guess. Doesn't need to be gentle. In fact, at this point, I might as well disconnect the whole lens just to get that out of the way. So I'm just going to pop this over. Come on, out you come. Oh, it's all sticky. What are you doing now? <laughs> 
We're disconnecting this bit. I'm not doing a very good job of releasing the display. There you go. Right, so we can focus on this now separately. I'll put the display over to the side. <clears throat> Okay, so we're going to want to get this jobby over underneath there. Um, and what we're looking at are a, what, two solder points, the ground and uh, TP8, which is what we're going to use to also link up the screen. I'm guessing that is also a trigger for the uh, display. I don't think there's any other points to tack down. No, I think it's just those two. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tack, I'm sure you can see it underneath my thumb there. Um, right, when I say tack, I'm literally going to solder it straight, straight there. So, solder uh, flux just into those two points. Should really help it stick down anyway. And I use my tweezers. In fact, actually, what I'm doing, um, what I need to do, caps on tape. Let's tape this down. Um, because if I don't tape it down, what will happen is the whole thing will just kind of wobble and it'll all be game over at that point, won't it? Any scissors anywhere? Yep. So let's stick that down in the right position, which is actually about there, I think. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is get a little bit of uh, solder onto the end of my tip and just breathe in all those fumes and get this there you go. That's down. And the same one on there. And that is down. Cool. That was straightforward. Painless. All right, so kept on tape, definitely a good idea. Let's do the other side. Let's have a look at what that looks like there. So, um, so I think there's quite a few more solder points on this one. Is there? There's the ground. There's. TP1, which we need to also do the screen to. Um, TP2, VDD, and I, th I guess we've got select and what's that ground? That's ground, I guess. Is that ground? What's underneath there? Oh, the ground point. Okay, fair enough. Uh, Cool. All right, let's get this lined up and then let's get some Kapton tape on. All right, I'm just going to get myself a little piece. And I, th I think we'll go across the start and select buttons. And yeah. This is exceptionally thin. I think I did a um, did an LED mod on an on a SP recently. It wasn't as thin as this. I'm sure. There you go. So I don't know how well that's coming out in the light. Mm. 
So what I'm doing is I'm looking at the buttons in particular and also this this ring here. Um, but it looks good to me. Stick around. Those points. Yeah, I think this is good. All right, flux. I will need to consult some kind of like tutorial at some point. TP, me one on one as well. Well, that's right on top of my my captain tape. Um, I will need to check because I'm I'm pretty certain that the um well I know I know that it there's a jumper that goes across to send a power. So all right, let's get this pushed down and attached. Ooh, that was a messy job. There you go. That's that one. Now we got here, which is quite a much larger point. I don't think that's connected. Is that connected? Uh, I mean, loosely, might put a little bit more, just a little bit more solder on there. No, yeah, that came off. There you go. And then we've got the last one, which is just here. So I wonder if we can zoom in a bit better with the phone. So I'm doing this on an iPhone. I don't use an iPhone normally. I mean, as in I don't use an iPhone at all. Um, but I'm hoping that it works for this filming. Let's get that down. Let's not take the caps with us. There you go. OK. That is attached. Sorry for all the good vibrations there. So we've got, that's, yeah, that's looking all right. And, oh, I've missed a spot. Just underneath the cap on tape, which is fine. Oh my God, don't do that. Yeah, you gotta be careful when untaping it. Right, so I missed uh, VCC, which is just here. That's fine though. That's straightforward. There's my good old flux. Yeah, that's flat. Bit of tinning. Gosh. Right. So that vibrates the um camera, doesn't it? Okay, let's get this kept on tape off as well. I wonder if I've missed a spot there. Don't think I have. Oh. That's only tacked on like that, isn't it? Okay. So uh so these are new points for right and Start select. Uh, sorry, I wasn't very clear on the video, but so there's um, new test points for uh, I assume that select this one and start. And over here, we've got the right trigger, which is actually going to be used for the display. So I've got new kind of connection points rather than trying to anchor down here, uh, which is cool. All right, but for the second, I need to. Check online. So. Okay, so back. There's two things I need to do. I need to bridge um, this point to this point, so it's going to carry the power. Um, and I need to bridge these two pads here. So these pads are used for a switch install. Um, so if they if they bridge, basically the lights come on. 
um, but because we're not going to install an actual uh, button in this, um, it's just going to be on the whole time, then that's where, so we're just going to bridge that um, that point. So we're just going to put a little bit of flux, and I might as well prep these points as well. And then uh, once that's done, I'm going to put the screen back in as well. Um, so. Let's get some flux down here. Flux, I want to add, let's get some solder down there. And let's just heat that up. And just and that was a fail. There you go. Nice fat bridge. And um, next, I need a bit of wire. So I've got a small piece of wire here. Um, no point in using, I don't need to use like the super, super thin stuff. I'm a big fan of uh, these cutters. Um, they do a really good job and nearly all my wires are the, whatever, 26 gauge. Um, absolute world of difference. So we want that wire to go to see there, so about that long. Yeah, I was trying to do it with kind of old school wire cutters, like the industrial kind where you kind of adjust the length and I was messing up every single time. Whereas this gives me perfect uh, wire cutting every time. So let's zoom back in and let's get our jumper wire installed. Hopefully that's long enough. <laughs> My hand's in the way. All right, what I'll do is I'll actually tin those two points that we're going to connect. And let's get that wire on. It's one end, oh, a little bit too much. I trim it or I just kind of wind it around. I think I might trim it. That's the right thing to do, isn't it? Although getting it, ah oh man, so trimming it and then trying to get the wire is going to be a pain. Exposing the end of the wire. Maybe it will melt if I just heat it. Let's find out, shall we? Yeah, that kind of worked. I mean, it didn't smell great, but it did work. All right, clean up time. So get that alcohol back down. Let's clean up those uh, pads. I might as well test it as well before I kind of close everything off. I'll start rewiring in the screen rather. Can you see that, my focus? I don't know. That's my camera. Um, light. I think that's okay. There we go, and then I'm just gonna get this cleaned. mucky flux off. So I think this flux is supposed to be no clean, like you don't have to clean it off, it doesn't make any difference if it, if it doesn't come off, um, but I would rather clean it off. Okay, so that is our first attempt. Hopefully that's all good. And it doesn't immediately blow up on me. It might. 
I've only had a um, capacitor blow up in the past. Get some power, getting some power. Three and a half volts. Is three and a half volts? No, it's yeah, three and a half volts. Right. And positive and negative. Off we go. Oh, there we go. Cool. Lots of lights. Okay. Nice. Okay. That's good enough for me. Let's get the display back on, which is over here. So, I think the display has already got a cat hair. All right. So, we've got. Uh, where has that landed? I don't know. So this is right and right now goes into this spot over here. Oh my gosh, this is all tangled up. Can you even see what I'm looking at? All right. Should we zoom in? So, uh, this is a, the display on this is a um, funny playing ITA. I'm a big fan of the ITAs. Um, they look really great. I mean, just because you can't see it from kind of a, 30 degree angle or like an extreme angle doesn't make any difference but let's get that right so we've got the um right left and mm, i want to say start but i think that's like it doesn't make any difference it just needs to be a signal um so let's get take on let's do the left side first and let's untangle these wires um is that right yeah so that's the start so oh, i'm gonna have to turn those pads just cleaned all this, right? So we've got. I think that's actually select, but it doesn't matter. Yeah, because it's basically just you have to hold down three buttons to make a thing work. Right, so that's the start button. Uh, I was turning these, wasn't I? So let's get. So, bit of solder on there. Bit of some solder on that. Okay, oh, screw it. I might do the right side first, this is the easiest one. This wire is clearly now way too long. Okay, that's the right side done. That is definitely the start. I'm going to stick the soldering iron into my hand, which would be bad. All right, the start is this one. I might do left first because it's in the... It's in the path, basically. I don't want to... No idea if you can see what I'm saying. The lighting might be bad. I've got a great angle. Alright, there we go. Yeah, attached. And then you're going on to if I can get you down. Alright, that is connected. Okay, so next cleaning job. Yeah, I think I'm done with the soldering iron. I'm going to turn it off, try not burning me on. What is the red coming off there? I guess there's some red ink. 
There you go. These two aren't shorting together, no they're not. I mean, the, those two, so the three buttons here, basically what they do is you let, it lets you align the ITA screen, but it was already aligned in the first place, so maybe not necessary. Okay, so we want this to go over there, and I think we are done. Just a case of putting this back together again, and maybe tidying up my desk a little bit. So, um, yeah, all right, those pieces are in. That is going to go over. And down, I'm gonna flip this around so I can see what I'm doing. That's okay. Okay, that is down. The speaker is not in the place it should be, I don't think. I think the speaker's in the way. Let's get one of our tweezers just to kind of... Let's get the tweezers and move the speaker out of the way so it actually closes. Where is it stuck? Mm -mm 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 -mm. Oh, it's hooked on the outside as well. Okay, there we go. All right, okay. Cool, that seems to be closing. I'm just going to pop the video in. That doesn't look like it's quite in, does it? Like, there's a lot of teeth still showing. All right, don't want that much showing. All right, let's lift this up a little bit. It's because one of my pegs have come down. Okay, 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 okay. Do another thing, are we? Heat sakes. These things either go straight in or they mess you around. There you go. There you go. That's in now. So there's solid color. Um, uh, what they call silicon on this. So between you know, this side, there's solid colors, but I'm kind of hoping that the effect will let it stick out, uh, will kind of shine through, um, shine through the plastic. There's something in the way of this. I don't think it's, oh, yeah, that's it. All right, so let's get our screwdriver and get screwing. So yeah, I've got these different screws for this one because like I said, it was a, a brittle shell and I did not trust having screws that were too big for it. Um, ordinarily, I would use the OEM, the OEM uh, screws, um, but this is not ordinarily. Uh, where are we going into? That post. So I'm going to give a little twist to the left. And then down it goes. In fact, actually this one's got a small crack in the, um, the post, so you can see what I'm talking about. So this, this screw isn't really gripping as well as I'd like it to because there's a crack in the post. But it's holding on well enough that everything else is going to push it in place. So I'm, I'm kind of happy with that. It's not, it's not a problem. All right. Okay. So last bit's in, uh, if we're facing the right, then that goes over there. Yeah. So right goes on left side. Come on. 
So I think these trigger these buttons and the triggers are I think they're funny playing. I want to say they're funny playing. Because if they were retro six, they would be um, matte black with kind of a texture and they're not. So pretty sure I got these from funny playing. And I mean, I'm in the UK, but I buy the funny playing stock directly from funny playing, mostly because it's generally cheaper than not funny playing. And now I've lost the power switch. Where did I put that? Oh, just found it. It's way off screen. It ran away. Power switch is normally the piece that I always forget to install. Every single mod I do, every single Game Boy I open, I forget to put the power switch in. Okay, uh, let's pop this in. What am I doing? Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, looks okay. All right, let's get the tri wing back. And then let's close it and test it once we're done. So I'll take this little screw that's supposed to go down here. This one is supposed to be black, but it's not. Again, because of the the shell I'm using. And let's drop all these in, ready to go in. So these are all tri-wing. I've got a theme with these, the original screws. Um, so I don't know what I was talking about with the, well, I know what I was talking about. Basically, I put these through, I use these on a, um, uh, a Retro 6 shell in the past. And as I screwed the OEM screws through, it came straight through out the other side. I don't know why, I don't know what was particularly special about it, but I'm always nervous about that, particularly with transparent screens. I always feel like I'm gonna end up screwing right through and it really shows when transparent screens, um, when the screw comes through the other side. Whoa, just dropped a screw. The screw that jumped off the table. I say jumped, I literally turned it upside down and it fell out of the post because I hadn't screwed it in. One left. All right, let's stick some batteries in it and test it, shall we? Um, and we've got our Fire Red. It is not an original copy of Fire Red. It is a uh, repro copy, so a replica copy. And what I do is get a bunch off AliExpress and then just kind of throw them in as um, bonuses to people buying my Game Boys, just so they've got something to play with when they uh, first open it. So. That works. It's kind of okay. Oops. You know. I guess because there's no buttons up in the shoulders, it's more just like around the edge. Yeah, okay. It's a shame that we got green LED there. Arguably, I should change it, shouldn't I? But. 
yeah, it is what it is. So, yeah. Oh, I should check that the, so I think it's, yeah, so you can see those two things and I can adjust, but I really don't need to. I think the brightness is up here. Is there a brightness touch sensor? I don't think there is. I think there is, but I don't think it's responding because it's like way up there. Bashing it. Anyway, okay. So that was the, um, what was it? Nasty the Nerd LED mod. Nice and simple, kind of always on, looks cool. Kind of a detail that would be nice to fix. Um, and it's nice that it's always on or always off. I've got, um, this was modded with, um, this is a Retro 6 um, mod, which has, uh, requires I push down so it's a nice set of colors. It looks bright and it's cool, mostly because this is entirely transparent, but I have to hold down two buttons for it to kind of work. And um, it has no state, so it never remembers to stay on or not. Um, but yeah, it's an ITA screen as well. Cool, so I'll give this a wipe down and uh, Hand this over to its new owner on uh, this weekend, in fact. Okay, cool. Thanks for watching. Hopefully, this is useful.